Merry Christmas. As we continue in our devotion series on this, the fifth day of Christmas. And today we continue with the theme of hearts. And today we talk about a trusting heart. A trusting heart. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 through 8. Turn now and hear God's word. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. You will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing for your body and refreshment for your bones. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Trusting hearts. Remember God's teaching, it says. Proverbs reminds us. Hold fast to loyalty and faithfulness. And do not rely on your own insight. Follow these instructions according to Proverbs. And it bolsters our trust in the Lord. The teacher here wants the pupils to look to God, not themselves, for guidance and wisdom. Trust the Lord with all your hearts. In contrast, question your own thinking and insight. Question it through the lens of God. One of the conundrums we face through, though, is how to tell the difference, right? I had a professor who warned us in sem as seminary students that discerning between the voice of God and the voice of Satan, that our own could prove to be a difficult task. I remember hearing something similar to what this author's professor said. See, often we grant God's stamp of approval on our own judgments, thinking we're in line with God's, and plans to con con convince ourselves that we are right with God. And lament quote is very good here. It says, you can safely assume that you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people you do. You can safely assume you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people you do. Hence the astonishment to the admonishment to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not to rely on our own insights. God does not leave us bereft of tools to which which to know God's heart. God's will and God's way. God gives us with no less than the word made flesh. Those teachings embodied in the kingdom very near. Emmanuel, God with us. When we need to check our insights against those of our God, we need only to look to Jesus to see if it resembles one or the other. If the likeness between our thinking and that of teaching of Jesus closely matches, then hold fast to it. If not, be faithful enough to back up, regroup, and think again. See, our culture dissuades us from admitting we might be wrong or even that we are uncertain. Our culture wants us to pick an answer and go with it. Changing our minds on an issue brings forth calls of hypocrisy or weakness or even disloyalty. If this Proverbs text reminds us, however, that our only unchanging loyalty is to be to the Lord our God, and our complete trust and love of God provides us the truth and the true north of our wisdom, judgment, and behavior. It's our yardstick, our measuring stick. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding, it says. So in this season of Christmas, with the gift of God's sons, grants us this unprecedented window into this wisdom, will, and the way to be holy. The wisdom of God often deemed foolishness by much of the world because it turns things upside down. The teaching of Jesus were rejected by many because 
that notion of turning the other cheek, becoming like children, loving your enemies, praying for those who persecute you. The list, the last will be first. I do not believe I would come to these conclusions through my own insights. In fact, I think I'd go in the opposite of many of those. Instead, I am inclined to capture and capulate two earthly powers. Look out for the number one made and relish when I dislike what I get and think what and others get what's coming to them. See, no wonder Proverbs tells us not to trust in ourselves, but ask us to trust in the Lord with our whole heart and not to rely on our own insights. See, when I hold up my own conclusions and compare them with the person of Jesus Christ and the teachings of God, the contrast between the two is stark sometimes. And it's easy to distinguish God's will after all. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, some questions for the day. How do you remain loyal and faithful to God? How do you bind those things around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart? Often we are told to trust our guts. How does that cultural request fit or not with the instructions from Proverbs. Let us pray. Lord God, you do not leave us to guess our way and wisdom, but rather provide us with clear commandments, repeated teachings, and your embodied word, Jesus Christ. We have no excuse for failing to be loyal to your will. Nonetheless, we try to make your teachings match our desires instead of the other way around. Lord, forgive us for our stubbornness and help us to look at Emmanuel, God with us, to learn how you want us to live. Give us the courage to be faithful to you and you alone. Help us to trust in you with all of our heart and rely not on our own insight, but on yours. May we acknowledge you in all of our ways so that we do not follow in the wrong place and we do not lose our way. May we see your way and follow it. Amen. Merry Christmas, brothers in Christ. May we embrace the gift of a trusting heart, trusting in the Lord with all of our heart, and leaning into his wisdom and not ours. Go in peace this day. Amen. Mm -hmm.